I might never check ESPN.com ever again. Honestly. But let's take a step back and figure out why I care about that and how I plan to do this. This is me attempting to go on Hacker News and then getting shut down by Intention. Intention is a browser extension I use to try to stay focused, basically limiting the time I spend on distracting sites each day. It's really helpful, but sometimes I do still push my limits. And one of my weaknesses is ESPN.com. There's a lot to be distracted by here, and a lot that I just don't want. Like Fantasy Sports, Stephen A. Smith, ESPN Plus, and more Stephen A. Smith. Come on. But ESPN has not always been like this. If you go to archive.org, you can find super old versions of tons of websites. This is one of the oldest versions of ESPN.com you can find on the internet. You recognize the featured content in the middle, which they still have today. To the right, they have the top headlines, and on the left, they have a list of sports. It wasn't perfect, but it was better than what they currently have. I intend to take the shiny objects out of the ESPN.com experience and boil it down to something built with my best interest at heart. The current ESPN.com is a graphical user interface, or a GUI. But since I don't actually need or care about graphics here, I can use a different kind of interface, a command line interface. Command line interfaces are basically what you see in every hacker movie scene where someone's typing in green font on a black background. They're intimidating at first if you've never used one before, mostly because of the hacker association, but CLIs are super helpful because they give you only what you command them to give you. And in the interest of going as far away from ESPN's flashy design as possible, this seemed like the perfect fit. Obviously, an interface like this can't do everything ESPN.com does. And as I mentioned, I don't want it to. So let's get some requirements here for what I'm going to build. I basically just want to see headlines and read articles. ESPN has headlines on the homepage and on pages for each sport. So my new command line interface will need to do the following. One, show article headlines from the homepage. Two, show article headlines for specific sports. And three, allow me to read articles. So first, I need a way to get data from ESPN. In an ideal world, I just use an API, an application programming interface. That will quickly and easily get the data that I want. With a nice API, I could write code that looks something like this. Get the headlines, get the sports, get the article content. But ESPN doesn't have an API because they don't want people doing what I'm doing. They want people looking at their ads, signing up for ESPN Insider, watching LeBron eat tacos every Tuesday. Fortunately, there are other ways to get the data I care about. One of those ways is using browser automation. You've probably had firsthand encounters with Instagram bots. Maybe they liked your posts or made some nonsensical or generic comments on your stuff. Well, Instagram doesn't really want bots running their world, so they don't expose an API to easily perform these actions but people get around it using browser automation. Essentially, you write a program that automatically opens a browser, then performs certain actions in that browser window. This could be filling in forms, clicking like buttons, or even subscribing to a YouTube channel. And you wonder how I have a whopping 480 subscribers. And browser automation is a great way of getting data too, so I'll use that in my CLI. I use a library called Playwright for browser automation, which will let me open ESPN in a window and get data from that window. Then I'll use a library called Inquire so my CLI can ask me questions and give me control over what info I'm getting. So now I'm getting headlines I care about. This is a good start, but after running through this and testing it a bunch of times, it's just way too slow. I really want to make sure I have a fast feedback loop while I'm programming. That means I can make a change in my code and very quickly see what kind of effect it's having in my program. Using Playwright and browser automation is slow, so it makes for a slow feedback loop. The reason it's so slow is because of what actually happens when a web page is loaded. When a browser accesses a web page, it does a few different things. First, it gets the actual text content of the page, the HTML. Within the HTML, it searches for the CSS files to retrieve. The CSS files will tell you will tell your browser what the design of the page is. Then it has to download those CSS files. Then it has to download the images for the page. 
The HTML that your browser downloaded also tells your browser how the page should behave on mouse clicks, key presses, and a whole slew of other actions that you can take. Interactions like these are handled by JavaScript files, which also need to be downloaded by the browser. Then it reads the HTML and CSS files and shows the text content and images with the styles applied. All of this happens pretty quickly, but when I'm testing my CLI over and over and over again, the process starts to feel a little slow. In fact, you can actually open up the, the developer tools in your browser right now and see how long it takes to download each item that I talked about. If you want, you can refresh the page, look at the network tab and see what it looks like, but I'll show you here. For our case, with a text interface, we only care about the content. We don't actually care about the styles or the interactions because we're making our own interactions and our own very plain styles. Fortunately, I can cut out the middleman from the picture and just download the HTML directly without having to use a browser at all. So I'll get rid of most of the code I have and start from scratch. I'll use something called Axios to just download the HTML or the text content I care about. And then I'll use another tool called Cheerio to sift through that content and find the stuff I care about. I'm no longer downloading CSS, JavaScript, or images. This will make my feedback loop much faster and will end up making my code a lot simpler too. So let's start writing some code from the very beginning again and make this thing happen. Okay, I think we're looking good, so let's run this again. Now we can get homepage headlines, see all available sports, see headlines for specific sports, and read any article I choose with no distractions. There is one last thing I want to have in this CLI that ESPN.com definitely doesn't want me to have. I wanna be intentional about getting sports headlines every time I do. So I'm gonna add some code that will keep track of how many times I've used my CLI. I basically only care about this on a daily basis, so I'll just store the number of times I've used this for each day. And I'll use something called chalk to change the color of this welcome message. So it's green for anything less than five, yellow above that, and red above 10. Now anytime I run it, I'll know how many times I've checked sports headlines. Let's make sure it changes color at my sixth time and then my 11th time. And at this point, I will rage quit. Realistically, there are some improvements I might make to this in a future video. I'd probably want to see scores and it would be nice to have access to this on mobile. Maybe standings would be good too. These are things that I can make happen if I choose to, but software should be designed with the user in mind. And for right now, I'm pretty happy with this. I may never go on ESPN.com again. I hope you liked this video. I had fun making it. Be sure to consume internet content responsibly.